Hey everyone, this is Stefan from ProjectLifeMastery.com. Today joining me is my brother Andreas Palernos, who's been having massive success from Kindle Publishing, CreateSpace Publishing, and uh, audiobook publishing as well. Last month, uh, he made $57,000 profit from his publishing business, and many of you guys uh, might remember Andreas uh, from an interview that I did with him uh, about a year and a half ago um, at his lake. And uh, he shared at the time how he, within I think about four months, he went from zero to around, was it 4500 a month? Or $6,500 $6, a month in four months. Well, since then, uh, a year and a half or so later, uh, he's up to 57000 plus per month from his publishing business. Uh, pretty impressive. He skilled it up beyond anyone that I've ever come across. Uh, even shattered my own belief systems of what's possible with publishing. Uh, since then, he's worked with K Money Mastery, my program, and myself. We've done events together, coaching together. He's created the Maverick Coaching Program, and he's coached uh, dozens of different, uh, you know, people that are more advanced, also brand new beginners, build their publishing business. And I think he mentioned that he has 14 uh, Maverick clients that are part of his program that have built a six-figure publishing business from his coaching and expertise. So, Andreas, excited yeah. to have you today. Good. I'm excited to be here. As always, I always like doing these for, for everybody. I always get a lot of people that reach out after the videos and, mm -hmm. and they're motivated and inspired that you can start with zero and be where you are today two years later, a little under two years later, right? Yeah, totally. Now, we've, um, you know, since that interview we did about a year and a half ago, we did one that was, I think, a follow-up and that was just within Key Money Mastery, put it in there. And we've done several other different interviews, uh, you know, sharing your progress, you know, because I've seen your progress. A lot of people inside Key Money Mastery have seen your progress uh, over the, the last two years or so. Um, you know, we've done different videos just kind of sharing different strategies and tips and, and all that sort of stuff. And so I'm excited to do this one with you just to dive deeper into um, a little bit more about your success, uh, a lot of things that you've learned along the way, um, maybe some of the, the, you know, things that you're teaching people now, what's working best with publishing, and uh, some of the success stories that you've been able to help produce and create in the, the publishing business. And then also talk a little bit about uh, Key Optimizer, which is a, a software that we've been working together now for the last year or so. And um, we're relaunching Key Optimizer 2.0 to have some new additional features. And you've been heavily involved in the development of that. So let's first maybe start off, um, you know, maybe you can share a little bit about uh, the success that you've had in the journey and exactly, you know, where you are now and, um, you know, what you see going forward with Kindle Publishing. <clears throat> Um, yeah, so I, I'm, I'm still active in publishing. I kind of have my moments. I'm in and out. Uh, it, it is a passive business now that requires very little of my time, but I kind of get motivated because I'm coaching people that are reaching these heights, so they're kind of slowly on my tails. Um, you know, my, my top student did 27000 last month, um, you know, and I've coached him for over a year, and he started with, he didn't have a book published when he came to me, and a year later he's generating that kind of revenue. And, you know, so he's kind of clipping at my heels, uh, you know, motivated to, to catch up. And I've got another one at 25000 and and some other ones just under twenty. dollars um, So they're making big revenues. And so I'm, I'm motivated. I get these sparks to stay well ahead to try to remain a leader in this business. Um, I think where, my, where, where it's changed drastically for me in this business is that I've always been a big investor in trying to figure out Amazon. You know, like I, I develop products trying to see how Amazon markets them through all its different techniques from, you know, email marketing to pixel marketing to whatever else they're going to do to try to sell your product. Because of that investment, you know, I've had a lot of books that didn't do well because they weren't for primary of making money, but to figure out Amazon's algorithm on how you can rank and, and do a lot of these. What I have found in the last, say, six months, the biggest change for me has been the fact that I've realized that you can have the best book in the world. And the reality is, I think that under Amazon's system on how they promote publishers when they initially launch a product, they give you that window. You really could have a really bad book and still have a lot of success because they manipulate everything. And they put a lot of weight behind ranking your product and putting it where maybe where it shouldn't be. What that has proven to me is that really 10% actually is the product originally and 90% is the marketing. 
what happens to become a passive income tool where we can walk away from this product and still generate money two years later because I have one of my best books making me six to seven thousand dollars consistently every month two years later and probably has a piece of real estate on Amazon forever now because the longer you actually have success the harder it is to knock it off that you know in that process I realized that if you want to become passive somewhere along that journey of developing that product you have to get on Amazon's radar beyond the 30 90 day window of initially launching because getting on their radar is very easy when you first launch a product they, they give these benefits of putting you on the first page and, and all these other types of things where they promote your product and you're making a lot of sales so oftentimes I, 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 I'm really happy for people when they launch a product and they have success because with success comes motivation confidence and you keep keep publishing but I think the biggest challenge that I'm, what I'm realizing that people have is trying to maintain that success on those products. And, and publishing is very easy. You can, your program is designed to teach people to do that. I can coach people to publish. And really, it's much beyond that. I mean, the marketing is such a big part of that. And that's why I think a lot of people over the last six months got really worried about the review swapping and all that kind of stuff and got intimidated about doing their business. That's a good thing because now they got rid of the people that aren't willing to change, that aren't willing to adapt, that aren't willing to do more. And what I mean by more is social media marketing. And with that, you're going to learn so much more about you know email lists and how much more valuable that's becoming now. And you know your social media marketing through Instagram and Facebook and all the things you're going to learn in that that's going to open up new doors. And that's what it's done for me where now I'm getting into affiliate marketing a little bit and having some success and I'm always trying to think of products beyond the Kindle business right and that's where now I'm in the physical product business with with four products five products and and now diversifying and having multiple revenues so I'm just gonna reiterate what I've always said in all our videos is that Kindle is such a small percentage of your future in this business that I think too many people you know, I see posts in KMM all the time, and, and you know, I got a great book. I don't understand. Do I change the cover? Do I do this? And I do that. And, and the reality is, I, I really believe that when you publish a book, you can have the best content in the world. Nobody knows how good that content is until they buy it. So obviously, put the best quality out there. But everything that the consumer sees, your description, your title, your subtitle, you know, your reviews how much content you have, your cover, that's what they see. That's what's going to convince them to buy your product. It's not the content. The content's important because when they buy the product, if it's not good, they're going to leave a bad review and then you've got to deal with that problem. But for long term, that's why you've got to focus on quality, but it doesn't get recognized until much further on when you've got the traffic, people buying it. And, and so my mind has changed in the sense that I never really look at a product now in the first one to three months because I know there's a lot that goes behind what Amazon's doing so I don't let that influence me in regards to the path that I'm going with the product I kinda give it a little bit more time to see if it fades away and then I kinda decide now <clears throat> whether that process it's become a little bit more longer term for me in the sense that early on in my first year if a product was hot I jumped on it I went into the market I improved the product and things like that but the reality was is that I didn't realize that Amazon played such a heavy role in your success. See how the product's doing after six months. Then you're going to have an indication if you have a future with that product. So my mindset's changed drastically ever since I've done that, where now I'm, I'm treating my products differently. I drastically, I mean, I, did, I was at 21,000 at, at one year in this business, and literally, uh, and, and that was in March to the, of last year. Nine months later, I doubled it, more than doubled it, and that was profit. And, and that's because my approach in regards to how I'm publishing and how I'm responding to the market has drastically changed in the last six to eight months. Right. So there's one thing, just publishing and making money, but a lot of people can make short-term money. The goal oh, yeah. is making long-term, sustainable, passive income where you can walk away from that product and it continues making you money. And I think yeah. a lot of people, they focus a little bit too much on the shortcuts, the, the loopholes and all that. And you can't build a, a sustainable business with that, right? Because 
if things change or at the mercy of whatever changes occur with Amazon or, or whatever it might be, whereas what you're saying is you've got to focus, and I know that you're the master at this and coaching people this as well, is building a long-term product that's sustainable, keeps making you money, and oftentimes that requires more work, and that's why people aren't willing to do that as much. People are a little bit lazy, um, you know, and just more of an emphasis on quality and stuff. Um, so what have you found have been the keys for you to make sure that your books remain profitable over the long term? Well, definitely the, the support of VAs. Um, you know, I can't put enough emphasis, you know, when, when people started transitioning from not doing swapping anymore and getting into social media, and, you know, we have a service uh, in the Maverick program that we've created contacts for people in regards to marketing their products and having a higher percentage of getting reviews. You know, we, what... You know, everybody jumped ship all of a sudden and, and fired their VAs and and for okay, assistance for those that you know and and, all, and I'm like whoa 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 relax I mean this process with the VAs nothing's new this uh, Amazon flagging accounts and and doing all that it's just getting harder and I'm not saying that that's the route you got to go but anything in business you can't fear you, you you've got to be looking at it rationally and I said. Even if you're not going to swap anymore, why are you firing your VAs? You need your VAs. And they'll say to me, well, what do I need them for? And I say, well, who do you think manages the books? Who thinks marketing? If you've got a top tier book that is making you five, dollars $6,000, what is it to, call, to pay a VA to monitor that book for the latest reviews that are coming in that are negative, to see if they're going to have voting up, uh, voting up negative reviews on that first page? Because remember, going back to what we said, it's appearance. If a consumer comes to your product, they're looking at the BSR, they're looking at the reviews. But the way Amazon's set up now, they just have to scroll down and they see the most helpful reviews and the most recent reviews. And if you've got negativity in there, that's going to affect your sales. So what is it to pay a VA to monitor something like that so that you can take a course of action? Now when you've got 10 and 20 books, you start to neglect those kind of features. And if you don't have help, you can't do it all yourself. I mean, who wants to monitor those things? Otherwise, you're just working like a dog in this business instead of the business that you're leaving. So, you know, we, we have a great business model where we can outsource responsibilities at a very cheap, cheap cost for, for most people all over the world. So, you know, but I think people, this goes back to the mindset, right? People aren't willing to invest. They're trying to find the easiest way. They're trying to find the source. People that I coach that come into the, the Maverick program, they're all understanding from the beginning that this is a long-term venture. You might not see success for six months or a year, but when that success starts to happen, it's going to happen fast. And you're going to be able to cope with those changes and the, and the mindset differences and all of that, and that's where the coaching becomes valuable. I have people all the time that come to coaching and say, I want to make $10,000. You do it all the time, too. We talk about this. Yep. When realistically, are they prepared or ready for that type of success? Because making that kind of money, you have a whole new world of different responsibilities that you never saw before. Most people aren't ready for success. They don't know how to deal with it. They don't know how to manage it. They don't know how to manage the money, and they start making foolish mistakes. They get overexcited. They get an ego. They start to get proud. Things like that that don't go well with business. So, you know, I think that the biggest barrier for people is mindset, obviously. We've talked about this consistently. And I think another part is they're not willing to invest enough into the business they come into this program. It's not like you have to invest a lot. So don't get me wrong. It's not like you've got to walk into this business and put $5,000 into it. You don't. I've met lots of people that have done the bare minimum in regards to their investment, but done very good research and very good implementation and been very profitable. I had one student who you know, had, I think, 22 books making literally $12,000. I had another student who had 50 books making $17,000. So, I mean, these are exceptional results on a small amount of books, right? I mean, it doesn't matter how much you look at it, how much of those books cost. They're not costing you that kind of money, right? So, but not everybody has that skill set. And, you know, other people have certain skill set, market research, implementation, managing VAs. You, if you could put some of those together, you're going to have a lot of success. But I think a large part is people come into this business and they're not realizing that it's a business. We are, you and I are doing our due diligence by sharing knowledge to you know, have an influence, a positive influence that if you're going to come into this, it can be a hobby, but you're going to get paid like a hobby. It can be a business and you can make a lot of money. But with a business comes a lot of things. You know how to run a business. I know how to run a business. 
It's not like an eight to five job. Not it will in the future. It'll be four hours, two hours, whatever you make it, depending on the investment you're putting into it with your time and your money. So just to clarify for some people that might be watching this that are on YouTube and yeah. maybe going way over their head, VA yeah. is virtual assistant. Uh, yeah. So, you know, let's maybe back up a little bit because I want to make sure we we're talking about some advanced strategies that, yeah. that for existing publishers, but people that are maybe brand new looking at this as an opportunity, do you want to share with them a little bit about the, your, your process? You know, a lot of people always ask, for example, are you writing the books yourself? Um, are you you working with writers to write you know to help write the books you know um, you know what are some of the virtual assistants helping you with to grow this business? Yeah, so um, you know, in, to back up for the writing, I've never been you know I've never been interested in writing myself. I don't have the patience for it, so I've outsourced that. Um, I've been you know in this business two years now, and I've come into contact with some people, and I've created I've been a silent partner in uh, a writing company. So I've got access to a, a lot of writers that allows me to turn over my writing really quickly and, and same for the people that's an advantage that I have given people that I've coached because I think there are a lot of barriers in this business. So when I coach, I try to make it really easy for people that they don't get hung up on getting delayed because we need momentum. We need to take action. And I think that, um, I think that, that sometimes that's a challenge for people because you know how it is ordering from Epic, right? And, and sometimes on Fiverr and, and some of the challenges that people face um, in regards to that. So then they get into this pro, your program, they get all excited, and, and, and that's awesome because you're motivational and you read all the uh, you watch all the videos, and, and you've given them all the resources. And sometimes they get a hiccup and they don't know how to deal with that hiccup. Another mistake that I think they have is that too many people put all their eggs in one basket. So they publish one book, and if it and then if it doesn't do well then all of a sudden, you know, now they're discouraged. That's why I always publish two books. So that, and you told me that advice when I first did my two books, do two books. So if one fails and one does well, and that's exactly what happened. One did really well and made a lot of money on my very first book, and the other one bombed. Ironically, just to show you what product development, two years later, that very first book that didn't do well is one of my best sellers now, two years later. And the one that did really well, made money for three months, I can't do it. Whatever I try, I can't get it to make money. So it just shows you how funny that business can be yeah. in regards to that. So I think your biggest mistake that might be newbies might come in is, you know, don't publish one book. Do two, maybe three. Um, spread them out. Try different markets. Don't do them all in the same market. If you see you're making money in a market, yes, go after that market again. Mm -hmm. um, and, and you know what, try to find resources that are not going to delay your momentum. You know, find out. If you're going to order from somewhere, ask them, how fast am I going to get this product back? Because if it's going to take six weeks, your momentum might be gone, right? Like, what do you do now for six weeks if you're a newbie? Yeah. Right? So try to find those resources if you can. So um, in regards to that, in all aspects of it. Um, so that would be my advice for newbies. Um, you don't need to spend a lot of money publishing. I think that the average book now for good quality is probably going to run you 150 bucks minimum, I think, if you want to have real success long term and a good start entry point. That's probably a lot more than people that came into this business two years ago. Yeah. And, you know, the books might only cost you 50 or 75 bucks. But this pro your program has done so well and, and brought in so many people. It's created competition, which means the quality's gone up which means the benchmarks and the standards have gone up. doesn't mean that you should be discouraged. It just means that you got to produce better products, right? And you can't cut corners. So if you cut corners, it, it, that's another thing that I'll give advice. Don't cut corners. Don't try to get the cheapest cover. You know, it's going to catch up to you. When you've got all these other people publishing and focusing on quality and trying to get fantastic covers and good descriptions written, how are you going to compete with that? Yes, you will maybe in the beginning because Amazon's manipulating things, but after that, you're going to be faced against a product that's going to just disappear and, and then all of a sudden not make you any more money and then you're just working for your money every three months, yeah. right? Yeah, I, I try to tell people too when they're first starting yeah. out and you're looking at the other books, try to do more than what they're doing, right? Because if you just try to do equal to them, then you're going to get, it's going to be hard for you to compete with that. So 
be willing to do more to create a better book, a better cover, better description, to get more reviews, market it, promote it more, etc. If you want to be able to, if you expect to compete with that. And I think a lot of people, they focus on just doing the bare minimum instead of thinking for themselves and thinking, hey, you know what? I want to add more more value than everyone else. Yeah. Um, so I want to ask you as well, uh, so you, you kind of briefly mentioned, what what's the initial investment that you'll typically have uh, for a book when you're first starting? And it might, it might be different you know, now for you because you're more advanced, but people maybe that you coach, what will they typically start with? Um, usually I'm encouraging people to spend a couple hundred bucks on their product, uh, which if they're a little bit longer versions than what most people are publishing and that's why it costs them a little bit more. Um, you know, so I'm, I am coaching people to learn about social media instantly, right away, and, and, and try to create a mailing list and how to go about that efficiently and, and to take your VAs to teach them how they can do your social media marketing through Instagram, through Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, all of these types of things. So that's how my coaching has changed over the last year is where I put a lot of emphasis on that now in the last six months and made it sort of mandatory to teach people that early on so that they're not kind of at the mercy of the VA process of exchanging reviews so that in the future at some point they, they can have a, a, a network that they can go to through strategies that they learn to get higher conversions on getting reviews. Um, you know, and, and, and I think that's the um, thing that I focus on in the business quite a bit now, whereas before maybe uh, we put a lot, of, a lot of emphasis on VAs in the review process. I think that 99% of the people still are doing that part of the business. I, I, I think in the short term, people don't really have a choice because getting a mailing list and social media and all that kind of is really challenging. Because Amazon doesn't give us any breaks. They don't let our product sit there for six months while we're building a mailing list and then come back to it to have success. So um, people that are putting an effort towards those types of things, and you've done videos and you've got them in full disclosure, so people have access to how to do that and learn how to do that. You know, the initial setup is a little bit of work. The maintenance of managing those mailing lists is a little bit of work, but hugely beneficial long term. Um, in your business in regards to doing that. So did that, did that sort of answer your question? Or did we get yeah, yeah. No, no, it does. And I think that's a key thing because I think a lot of people, they, they're, they're so uh, dependent on Amazon for sales, right? Yeah. So basically, the only way that they're generating money from their book is when people search for it and then they find the book, right? Or maybe Amazon recommends it or you know, things yeah. like that. That's their primary way of getting sales. And that's always going to be the majority of sales of what you're going to get because they're people that are on Amazon or maybe from their Kindle device. When you go and you use social media and just general online marketing like Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, you know, Pinterest, blogging, YouTube, all that sort of stuff, and you promote your book that way, now you're getting traffic and sales from other sources besides Amazon, right? Yeah. So now you're getting sales that your competitors aren't getting, which allows you to outrank them as well. And Amazon's going to love you for that because they're sending traffic. And I think many people aren't willing to do that. They just want to do, again, the bare minimum instead of building a legitimate business, which you have done, of sustainable you know, traffic sources for your product and ways of selling, promoting it, ways of building a list, all that stuff. And I think you know, that, that's a critical component of it um, that, you know, that, that I, I, I mean, both try to teach, right? Let, let's, let's look at it. I mean, if you go back to that video, there was no discussion about mailing lists. There was no discussion about social media marketing. But I've been committed to learning that aspect of the business. And here we are a year and a half later, and I can talk about conversions. I can talk about optimizing. I can talk about, you know, social media marketing and strategies. I'm not still a pro at it. I'm still learning. I'm not seven years, ten years experience like you in the business doing that. But my commitment to remain a leader or remain profitable in this business and being able to adapt to the Amazon changes, then they're going to happen. They're going to continue to happen because Amazon is not going to give you any warning. They're going to do what's best for their company, corporation as a whole. You have to be willing to adapt. You have to be willing to change. And I think change is a lot easier for people that are automated and have more time on their hands because then they can actually apply themselves uh, quicker. And um, then if somebody who is just grinding month after month to accumulate reviews and, and to you know build their books up and things like that. So I think the sooner 
that you can bring people in, VAs, virtual assistants, to help you with that process, to free up your time, to allow you to grow, to focus on growing, to focus on other opportunities that might arise through your email list of affiliate marketing or physical products or, you know, I mean, the sky's the limit. I mean, every day I'm still learning and seeing, oh, here's an opportunity to make money. There's an opportunity to make money. I mean, we're living in a time where e-commerce is still very new. And, you know, in regards to that, and, and you're seeing corporations now going into e-commerce because they're forced to, because the world is changing. And it's going to continue to change because people don't have time on their hands like they used to. It's much easier to go online and to shop and to make decisions and to commit to things than it is in the physical world. So I think, I think there's more than enough out there for everybody to get rich in this business. Um, but I think that we have to go back to how committed are you? How much are you willing to learn? How much are you willing to apply of yourself? Uh, how much are you willing to surround yourself with the people that are going to make that learning curve much less painful by putting you on the track, on the right track sooner, right? And, and in regards to that, and that's not to get saying to come and get coaching with you, coaching with me, but maybe surrounding yourself with a friend who's had success or, or you know, a colleague that you've exchanged with or whatever. And, and we see this all the time. People who join masterminds and, and they're helping yourself, but try to try to surround yourself with people that are more successful than you. Because if you put yourself at the same wavelength, that's great for accountability, but not in regards to learning, yep. so that you can be stay one step ahead all the time. All right, so let me ask you this: I get this question all the time, and I always <laughs> answer it all the time, uh, which is, can you still make money in Kindle <laughs> publishing? And do you do you think that the market's saturated? Um, you know, that question, I think there's more money to be made in Create Space and in Audible. It's a lot easier, I think, in, in those markets because the saturation is handled so much different. I think the big thing is, is that with Kindle, there's a lot of manipulation, okay? Like, we can manipulate our own rankings, which influence people buying the product. You know, we're getting reviews, we're losing, we're losing reviews, where I think Create Space and Audible, it, people aren't accumulating reviews through those processes, they're not manipulating the rankings, so it's more organic. So your, your products are ranking organically based on the results that you have done with Kindle. Now, I think there's a lot of money to be made in Kindle. Um, now, the, I, to answer that also, to contradict that, I think there is saturation in Kindle. Um, Amazon's worked really hard to change its platform to the KUU to resolve the saturation problem by giving people the option that, hey, okay, look, if you're concerned about getting a lemon, pay a subscription, you can get as many lemons as you want, you don't have to read them, and you can get a book. You can, you can find a book, so you can download 10, 20, as many as you want, right? So they resolve that so that the consumers keep buying and buying and buying. It's a bigger problem, you know, nonfiction is not so much a problem because people can get higher price points for the products and higher price points and, and people will buy at higher price because there's value. It's not entertainment. It's learning, right? In fiction, I think right now is a real challenge because fiction is going through saturation problems. Um, we've had a lot of people that I know that have gone into fiction, had a lot of success, not so much long-term, short-term. So I think there's big changes. There are big changes coming with fiction that will make it tougher to have short-term success um, and, and definitely even harder for long-term. But why do we go into Kindle? I mean, in reality, let's go back and reiterate what we said, right? What I said earlier in this, in this, meet, in this session is that we go into Kindle to get into bigger things because you're going to have a real hard time selling a Kindle book at $9.99 because Amazon doesn't want to sell it at $9.99. You put a video in your forum last year where it was a meeting with Jeff Bezos and Jeff Bezos basically looked at it and said, why would you ever pay that kind of money? He doesn't want products, ebooks, and things like that to sell at $9.99. He wants to make it inexpensive. So he, he's made it that way. So it's very elastic that you're going to be able to do it. Now, there are the exception, obviously, like anything, you're going to be able to. Create space, though, it's a physical product. It's tangible. Consumers are waiting to receive it. They buy it, they order it, there's a delay in receiving it, so there's excitement there. And then they get the product, they can hold it, they can read it, the physical. There's a longer sensation of, of you know, that they spent their money and it was worth it. And so you can get a higher price point for that. You can sell your product at 20 bucks, 30 bucks. Heck, I've got hardcovers that sell at 56 bucks. 
So people will find the value in doing that. So, and now that Amazon has gone into the physical business selling paperbacks and hard co- and things like that, as you see, that just, that just shows you the direction of where things are going. And I've always been a strong believer that physical, that books are not like the typewriter, where you and I have had our arguments where originally you thought, no, ebooks is the future. Ebooks is what everybody will pay. But I think that there's been a strong battle back of physical copies that even now Amazon is proving that and saying, well, we're going to open up stores and we're going to sell our own books and compete with them. So that's an indication to you, to all the people that are in this business, get into create space because you're going to make money if Amazon's promoting it heavy. Okay? With ebooks, there's very low entry to bar- barrier to entry, so it's very easy for anybody to get into it. It's a low cost entry point. There's a lot of manipulation done by Amazon, there's a lot of competition. So that's what makes it more challenging. If you learn the skills and put the efforts and have the right mindset, you can have a lot of success. So I think that's the key behind Kindle. But I think that you have to do Kindle to get to Create Space, to get to Audible, to have success in those platforms. You'll make so much more money in there that you probably won't even care too much about Kindle when you get there. So Kindle is basically, you have to start with it because it's the easiest way to get reviews, the easiest way to launch a book. All that sort of stuff. The market, yeah. Exactly. So Kindle, you know, and I've I've said this too and believe this, Kindle is a launching platform for your book, right? You start with Kindle, you can easily verify that there's a market, get some initial sales, reviews, they have some benefits like the free promotion and whatnot. But I think the free promotion, I mean, that's kind of one of the things that Amazon created that causes the manipulation so much because the books can go on a five-day free promotion, so the rankings are always a little bit more volatile. Um, but then once you have the book on Kindle, then you can do Create Space, which is basically print on demand, uh, a physical paperback or hardcover version. And then of course there's Audible and iTunes and all that. So you know where you know you, you mentioned you make a lot of your success from Create Space. You know, you know roughly how much you're generating from Kindle Create Space? Uh, I did Audible. I did uh, I did thirty six thousand last month from Create Space. Wow. And uh, and Audible was about four thousand, and Kindle is about I think the the difference whatever that is. Um, <clears throat> so you know I don't do as much in Kindle now than I used to do because I my approach has changed. It's my platform now. It's my funnel for getting out there and being very inexpensive to market, to brand, to get people to get on your mailing list. And because I know what to do now, two years later, I know what to do when I get those people in on how I can upsell them on Create Space and Audible, hardcover, CDs, whatever else that I'm going to affiliate marketing, whatever else, physical product, whatever else I'm going to sell to them. So for me, my, my strategy's changed where I'm not in it to try to capitalize on Kindle. I'm trying to capitalize on everything that Kindle has to offer beyond. Yeah. Right. Whereas a lot of people are so focused on trying to fight to make Kindle royalties, they're leaving a lot of money off the table getting into Create Space, Audible, and, and these types of platforms. Yeah, and that, that, that's one thing that always kind of blows my mind that we, you know, I remember since we did that event last year, I mean, we we're pushing people because we had so many people that came to us that had a big portfolio on Kindle that were still making, you know, pretty good money or whatever, but... You know, just getting them to publish into Create Space and Audible and building an email list and all, you know, just showing them how much more they could do with that instead of just having that limited mentality of just looking just at Kindle. You have to look beyond that and, um, you know, because there, there's so much more potential with it. So I totally agree. When I, when I went to physical product ASM, I always try to find a way that I can sum up mindset to people. And when we went to ASM, there was a speaker that shared that basically said, from making zero to 250000 in business is mindset. 250000 to a million is marketing. From a million plus is human resources. So it's your ability to finally say, you know what? I'm going to outsource. I'm going to start marketing. I'm not going to be dependent on me to make, make this all the way. And, and that's the biggest battle that people try to make so much money, they don't let go, they don't outsource, they don't delegate, they don't, you know, they don't, you know, they're scared to do that. And, and that's why they get kind of stuck and they can't get ahead. Now, 250000 is a big number. To some people, that might just be 1000 or 5000 
once they get over that hump, then they can they can grow, right? So that was a really good way that now that I use that as an example to sum up people's success in, in trying to have success in business and to become a millionaire. Yeah. So what, what about people? I mean, a, uh, you've obviously gone above and beyond, and you're focused on this, you know, online marketing full time. You're serious about it. You've invested in it. You know, what about the person that might be watching this and they're like, "Wow, you know what? I don't want to have to go through all that, you know, to become a millionaire and all that. I, I'd much rather just make a couple five hundred dollars a month." Yeah. You know, what do you think is, you know, what do you, what do you think would be involved? And do you think it's possible for someone just, hey, you know what? Just I want to make five hundred bucks a month. That would change my life. That pay for a lot of my bills and whatnot. Oh, I think that's very easy. <laughs> I think if you know, I mean, if pe if more people came to me and said, "I'm going to co can you coach me to make five hundred dollars a month?" I'd love that. I'd be like, "Oh, great! I'm gonna make you a happy man, uh -huh. right? Get that done in a few months, right?" Because realistically, you could probably just get away with publishing ten books, having ten create space attached to it, and ten Audible, um, and then maybe hardcover and, and some of the other things, and you could easily achieve that. You really do because when you spread out your product across five platforms and you're trying to make $500 off 10 products, that's 50 different platforms or 50 different products you're selling, it's a very good chance that you're going to make $500, right? I mean, when you look at it, it's only $10 uh, a platform, right? So um, so I think that that's very easy to do. I think, But the problem is I think most people are trying to do it in one platform. Right. And, and that's the challenge because... You know, when you publish, especially a newbie, you have to assume that it's a learning curve there, right? So the first book you publish is not going to be as good as the second, and the second is not going to be as good as the third, and the third is going to be. And you know, my rule of thumb is, chances are, you know, your first book is going to bomb. I mean, for you to come into this business thinking you can watch some videos and you're going to publish the best book ever and make five thousand dollars, I think is not being rational. It doesn't matter how good the program is. The reality is there's a learning curve there. Even if you're getting coaching, there's still a learning curve there, right? It's fast tracking, but you're still going to make mistakes. You're still not going to know all the, have all the experience to make the perfect book. So, but I think that's a very low amount of money. I know lots of people that are making that kind of money um, that have very small portfolios. They've just gone into all the different platforms so that they're making a little bit here and a little bit there. Well, once, once you get a taste of it, though, that's when you... <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, I, I, there, I have a lot of people I've coached, and they don't seem to stop. As soon as they're making more and more money, they just want to keep going yeah. um, in, in regards to that. In fact, I have two Mavericks that I've coached now for over a year, my most successful members, and um, they, they've never stopped with coaching. They're high believers in coaching. Um, so they basically, basically invested in me a lot, and, and, and they've gone through uh, all my coaching sessions, everything that I could think of in publishing, and I've developed a kind of an all-star program for them because they still wanted coaching, they still wanted to be a part of my life, and they still wanted me to have an influence in their business. So I developed an all-star, and in those things, I'm teaching people how to publish things like 75 books on a massive launching, right? And, and they're having a blast. They're loving it. Of course, they're, getting, they're making good money in regards to it. So, but you know, this is funny because one of those members was someone who didn't even own a cell phone a year and a half ago. She never even, 42 years old, never even owned a cell phone. Right. Now she's got 17 VAs. She's making 20-something thousand dollars a month. She's got two iPads, three, three computers. <laughs> and, and the other day she posted in the, in the Maverick group, she said I, she just learned how to clear her cash. <laughs> and it's like, it just shows you, you don't have to have all the experience. And we, I get a laugh at it because here we are, we got somebody who came from that and now she's an inspiration to all the people coming into the business. She actually posted in my group when she first joined, I just want to have a lot of fun and I want to make $200 a month. Now the new members that come in and read, they bring that up because later on, the most recent one, she's making $20,000 plus. Right. And you see how far it's come. Now, she's committed herself. She had the time. She committed herself. She invested in it. Um, and so it's worked out for her. Right, and I think it can work out for almost everyone. You really don't have to have the skill set. It can come. You can learn it. You've learned it. I've learned it. I came from nothing, and look how I'm talking today about things uh, in software development and stuff like that. So it just really comes down to 
what do you want out of it? Do you want it to be a hobby and make $500 a month and that'll make a difference in your life? Then it's a perfect business because you can do that. If you want to make, you want to change your life and you want to make so much money that you have all these, you can quit your job and you can, and you have all these different options, you can do that too. So it's great for everybody. It doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't, you know, in regards to that. You can be 17, you can be 60. So I think that's why I love the online business. I'm so excited about it and I'm only two years in. I, I look forward to what the future is. Yeah, so another thing I want to touch on is there seems to be two different schools of thought. Some people, they believe to make a lot of money publishing, you got to publish tons and tons of books, right? Whereas other people, you know, yeah. they don't necessarily have to publish that many. They just have a few books that make them a lot of money. Yeah. You know, what would you say is the best way you found? Uh, you know, even myself, I've published a lot of books. I have almost 500 books. But, you know, when you take out all the books that I've tested, used for experimenting, probably about 300 of those books were to experiment for something that I could coach, something that I could implement or on my existing books and improvements, um, you know, something so I would be a better publisher in the future. So I invested a lot in, in books that I had no, no, intense, no intention to make money. It was to learn. If you take my 200 books over two years, that's still a lot of books for most people. But look at the, look at the money that I'm making probably on those two books. I'm, I'm getting compensated very well. You know, I'm coaching people the option to be able to upscale. But it's not something that I enforce. It's not something that um, when I'm coaching that you have to do. Um, I've got many members, some of the most successful, that have very little books. I mean, I have a member of seven books making seven grand. So, you know, he has optimized on his portfolio. So you don't have to be a big publisher. You can, you can have a, a smaller portfolio and make a lot of money. And in fact, I teach people how to capitalize, how to optimize on every aspect of your publishing. The only thing that I, I worry people, I want to send the message out there. It's great to have success on a small portfolio, but with a small portfolio, it doesn't come diversity. And if you don't have diversity, when change occurs, you can drastically be affected. And this has been something that has occurred when the KUU changes came in. Majority, there was people out there making so much money on KUU that when they made the change, instantly they lost 75% of their portfolio. So that's an experience to running a business. So, you know, I'm always going to tell people if I've coached them for a long period of time, keep publishing so you have diversity. So you're not dependent on seasonal or fads or maybe the market just got saturated that you got into, things like that. So that, you know, you're not so dependent on three books or five books or ten books. The more you have, the more diverse you can be in the business. Um, because if you're going to be passive income, the last thing you want to do is have three books making you a lot of money. You make life-changing decisions and then all of a sudden quit your job and you're depending on the cash flow and something changes and you're, you only got three books. So obviously it's going to impact you more than somebody that has 25 books. Okay. But you don't need to publish 200. Yeah. Maybe you need to publish 200 to make 50 grand, but you, yeah. you don't need to publish 200 to make five grand. Right. And it, it, the, 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 the main thing is focusing on quality and doing things yeah. the oh, yeah. right way because a lot of people, they just publish more and more. They can't manage them. They, you know, they make money for a little bit and they drop. You know, if you do things the right way, and even just take it slow and steady. You know, a lot of people, they're yeah. rushing to, like, get rich quick. And I tell people, you know, like, what's the rush? Just take your time yeah. with it. Go through the process. You know, slowly scale up. Build a good foundation. And that, and you're going to have more long-term success. Yeah, I had one person message me, says, I need your help. And sent me a link, and I was hesitant to click on it. But I, I clicked on it, and sure enough, it was their portfolio showing me a screenshot. Actually, it wasn't a link. It was a screenshot of their KDP account. And they said, oh, I launched 400 books. And each book, like this was the end of the month, it had like one sale each book. And I'm like, they asked me, what do I do? I said, stop publishing. Because what you're doing is not working. It's not about just getting volume out there. You're, you're, I mean, we're talking about Kindle, KDP. I mean, they've got millions of books now. I mean, how you, you publishing masses is not going to make an impact. You have to have quality. You have to have a good book. All right, so we're going to talk a little bit maybe in another video about K-Optimizer and what we've created there and how it's helping publishers to grow their publishing business. Uh, so we'll do that in another video. But just to wrap things up here, I want to ask, you know, what, what piece of advice would you give to someone maybe that's brand new or someone that's already in this business? 
you know, in terms of the mindset, because I think the mindset we both agree is one of the most important things. You know, what are maybe a few things, you know, that people need to develop within themselves in terms of the mindset? They have to know themselves, okay? If you know yourself, you know your weaknesses, you know your strengths, um, learn from your weaknesses, but build off of your strengths. Um, so outsource the things that you're not good at. Um, don't have pride, okay? Don't have an ego because those things don't go well with business. You have to be open-minded that you're going to be willing to continuously learn, um, that this business is constantly evolving and you can't get complacent. Um, you don't need, it's not technical. You don't need to learn a certain amount of information, but just be willing to learn. Be willing to, um, you know, you know, that's what builds confidence is, is making mistakes and learning from it. Um, and so I think that, you know, with mindset, and this is something that I've learned and you've learned, and, and I have a very strong mindset because I've gone through a lot of failure and a lot of difficult times in my life, and that helps me get to where I am today. But, you know, one thing is I've never, I've always looked at people as an ability to learn. It didn't matter who was speaking. I didn't look at their credentials to influence me in regards to paying attention because, you know, you don't have to be a millionaire to provide good advice. Um, you don't have to have huge success in some sort of industry to be able to provide advice. What, what's the advice that's valuable that you can learn from, you'll be able to tell when the speaker speaks, whether it's BS or it's real. And, 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 and then you can make your decision whether you can take that information and you can learn. I think that is a big problem with a lot of people. That they, every, A lot of people have an ego and a lot of people have too much pride. And they don't want to admit that maybe the book's not good. It needs improvements. Um, you know, what did I do wrong? I should get help. I should reach out. I mean, you've got, I mean, how many of your 600 members in KMM are actually posting and asking questions? Because is there fear there? I mean, what's the worst? Somebody's going to answer and give you something. But you can see that there's fear there, right? There's the confidence to be even able to go into a group and to get your answers. Right? I mean, I face the same thing. It's a constant challenge to get people to ask questions and to share information in my group. And I've only got 80 members. So, you know, but I, I think with mindset is be willing to learn. Um, be willing to surround yourself with people that are going to make the, the learning curve so much easier. Um, that is a big thing. I mean, that's something that I live by is that if I want to get into something, I want to learn something, I surround myself with the people that know it so I can get there faster. Um, you know, so definitely do that at all costs because how do you put a price on something, somebody who has 20 years experience in something and can teach you something in three months or six months that you're going to have for the rest of your life, right? And if you have that attitude, I think that you're going to go a long way no matter what you do in your life in regards to that. So. So definitely do that. Um, don't get discouraged. I mean, with mindset, a lot of people get discouraged. You know, something goes sideways and, and all of a sudden they like stop. I see this all the time in coaching. I'm like, how was the business since our last session? Oh, you know, I didn't do anything. I stopped doing this in my business. I'm like, why? Oh, I was scared. That big word, right? Fear. And, you know, that goes back to yourself as an individual. Knowing yourself, knowing what your weaknesses are, knowing what your strengths are, capitalizing on your strengths and trying to stay away from the fear by, by maybe surrounding yourself with people that will make you, give you the confidence to get over it or to outsource it to people so that you don't have to worry about it. So I think try to avoid fear. Um, you know, have faith. You know, I've been watching a lot of people, motivational speeches from, from um, actors, and a lot of them say faith is so much more important than hope. You know, have faith in what you're doing, buy into what you're doing, be committed to it, because if you're not, then it's a hobby, right? Mm -hmm. If you do have something at half ass, you're going to get something half ass back. If you're fine with it, then that's okay. This goes back to making $500. If that's all you want to make, then that's great, right? So, so I think those are the key points in mindset. As you start to have success, keep trying to surround yourself with people that are a step ahead of you. Because if, if you, you know, and I faced this when I started to have success, I started to leave some of my friends behind and some people behind that were colleagues and so forth because, you know, with success came more money, 
came more business, came more my mind, you know, intelligence in regards to the things that I'm working on, um, maturity, it all just came. And the people that I was surrounded around, they weren't there anymore. I had surpassed them. So, you know, I, I put myself in a new environment where people can motivate me and inspire me and, and teach me things so that, you know, I can keep excelling, right? And that's not just about making money. That's just even in self-development and as a human being, whether you're a parent or a, a husband or anything, right? So I think, I think those are the main points. That's, I find that in all my coaching, that's my biggest challenge with people is mindset, you know, in everything that I'm coaching. The publishing part is easy. I can teach you that in a heartbeat. It's the mindset that goes behind having the confidence and motivation and inspiration and, and you know, um, all of those components that go into getting to where you want, that final goal. Awesome. So maybe real quick, you want to maybe share with people a little bit about Maverick Coaching and um, yeah, how so find out more about it? Maverick Coaching is, is technically, if you want to learn everything that I have, it's, it's really a one-year program. Um, but, you know, not to say that when you come in, you have to do the one year because it's, it, it gets more challenging as we, we go deeper into coaching and you become a more um, established publisher. So many people come and they coach and they'll start really with like four sessions and, and I teach them the fundamentals of business um, from being a good publisher uh, to managing some VAs. And then, you know, and then people want to scale up and they want to go to the next step so they continue on with the coaching. And, and then we kind of focus on, you know, shifting yourself from being an author to a publisher so you have the abilities to upscale uh, or, or automate a little bit more and upscale. And as, you know, they do that, that portion of coaching, they decide that, you know, hey, I want to, I want to continue growing. I, I want to get into multiple revenues. Um, I want to manage more people. I don't want to be a publisher anymore. I just want to manage my business. So we shift that mindset from being a publisher to a manager where most of the responsibilities are outsourced. So we kind of do that with the next four sessions. And then, and then the tail end of the program is shifting you from full automation where you're a manager to becoming a business operator to a business owner. And, and you, know, you, you can see in what, everything that I've shared now in the program is all, a lot of it is transition in mindset as you're going through your business development from being you know just a, a really good author to being a really good business owner and and then when you become a business owner in the end after a year that you have the freedom to get into affiliate marketing to get into physical product to get into real estate whatever else I mean my two top Mavericks are heavily now investing in the market uh, one of them is going to be going into real estate because they've taken my real estate program. And they have all the time in the world to do that because they, they were patient. They plugged away and they built their cash flow up and they built their business up and they continued learning to run a really strong, viable business. And that takes time. I wish I could teach people that in four sessions, but I can't. I mean, you're asking me for 20 years experience in business to teach you that. And that's hard. But you do have so, smaller, I guess, programs and sessions for people that want to join. Pardon? You, you do have some, uh, shorter programs for people to join just to get their feet wet and get started. Yeah, yeah. So the bronze program, four sessions. If you want a little bit more commitment, eight sessions, and then even more, I can coach you for six months. People always, the, the number one question to me, people come to me and say, you know, uh, what are you going to teach me or when am I going to get my return back? And, and my answer to them is going to say, well, you go to school for four years. When do you get your return back? You're investing in the future for yourself so that it's a new career with the potential to make that. But that potential only becomes realization depending on the commitment that you're going to put. So people that are coming to me for coaching, if you're going to commit, I'm going to commit. Okay, I'm going to give you everything that I can for you to have success. But if you're not going to commit, then it doesn't matter because in the end, you have to do the work, not me. I'm, I'm doing my work to build my business. So I'll give you the blueprint. I'll give you the motivation. I'll give you the whatever you need. Um, and you can do that with four sessions. We have lots of member people that I've coached. I've coached 125 people now since September 2014. It's a lot of people. Um, seen all different kinds of people, challenges, things like that. So I think I have a lot of experience in this business now in regards to being able, a much better coach today than I was a year ago because now I know when somebody comes in, I, I can see where my challenges are going to be to help you with. And we're going to overcome that. So, yeah, I got a simple program, four sessions, and 
and you can be with me for as long as you want. As I've still coached people now, 14, 15 months have been coaching the same people. Awesome. Cool. All right. Well, thank you so much uh, for joining me today. I think uh, this will help a lot of people. And what I'll do is I'll put a link to your website and your information maybe below so people can reach out and uh, you know learn a little bit more about your programs. But thanks again. We're going to do another video uh, that's going to go a little bit more into K-Optimizer, which is a software that we've developed for publishers. So stay tuned for that in the next video. Bye. Hey, this is Stefan, and thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed this, then please hit the like button below, leave a comment to let us know what you think, and make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more great videos like this. Now, if you want to take your life to the next level, then I want to offer you a free gift. It's called my Life Mastery Toolkit, and it literally has the best of the best of what I have to offer in terms of videos, articles, and resources for taking your life to the next level and living an extraordinary life. To get access to this, all you have to do is click the link that will appear right here on this video, or if you're on a mobile device, then click the link in the description below, and then head on over to that page, enter your email address, and I'll send you immediate access to the Life Mastery Toolkit. I want to thank you again for watching this video. Until the next one, I'll talk to you soon.